Welcome to the June edition of From the Council Chambers. The June Council meeting was a full agenda because of course it was the, uh, the, the budget agenda um, with a full chamber um, and, and, and public gallery and we certainly didn't get out of here till late at night but there were some really important items on, on the agenda we'd like to share with you. And the first of those was around the Small Dwellings Mark II we're calling it, uh, which was Many of you might have been aware of the public consultation process we did around called the Fremantle Alternative about small and more diverse housing across Fremantle and how we actually start to encourage that next level of, of, of housing that can actually provide the kind of housing we need as Fremantle goes forward. Um, we just had the census results out and we saw that Fremantle has a larger number of small households and a larger number of, of households with only, one, with only one person in them. But like much of Perth, we also have a lot of houses that are you know, three and four bedrooms with only, with only one or two people in them. So it's about actually offering both diversity and affordability for housing going forward. And what we voted on at the council meeting was to put out for public comment um, the key parts of the, it was called the proposed scheme amendment number 63, which will be around more affordable and diverse housing. It's got some really great stuff in it around built form and sustainability and diversity and just how we can start to encourage what, what I think is going to be a real model for housing um, across the state. Like Small Dwellings Mark 1, which was you know, called Granny Fats Without Grannies, which ultimately became the planning rules for the whole state, I think we will see the state following Fremantle's footsteps on this as well. Uh, the scheme amendment number 63 is now out for public advertising, and we really love your feedback on that before it comes back to a future council meeting for adjustment and sign off. As many of you may know, the Point Street development site between Adelaide and Cantonment uh, has been one that's had a Doubletree Hilton Hotel plan to go on it. Um, there has been some delays around that project, partly because the uh, developer who's doing that project is also doing two more uh, Doubletree Hilton Hotels in both Perth and Northbridge, and this is the third um, in their line, and they have come to the council asking for uh, a delayed start to the project uh, um, because the council put timelines in terms of the use of that site. The council was willing to support this as long as we saw some really key progress on the site and that includes a sales office being in the uh, Fremantle CBD um, as soon as the start of September this year so they can get the pre-sales they need for the non-hotel component of that very large development. It's a 5,000 metre um, site um, that's currently got a more multi-storey car parking station on it. Um, and in the meantime, what the city will do is actually take back the use of that, that car park, um, as well as actually doing a temporary car park on the side of the multi-storey, so that we've got really good um, CBD parking for shoppers in that part of town. And one of the reasons the council was really happy to support um, the delayed start to this project was because with the King Square project underway uh, as soon as August, September this year, and the ex expected um, project on the Coles Woolstore site just adjacent to that also happening um, within the next 12 months we're going to see two major development sites in, in, in that part of Fremantle and we're really keen to make sure the east end of, the, of Fremantle continues to work and it does have adequate parking so actually delaying the start of this was actually a bit of a win-win and once um, those two development sites come to completion um, we will see construction on Doubletree Hilton um, start um, which I think will be really great for the east end of town and its revitalisation. The 2017-18 financial year budget was passed at the council unanimously and it was a really solid budget. Firstly, it was importantly a budget with a very low rate increase, 1.9% uh, average uh, across the rateable areas um, and one where we were really keen to see that those rates kept low because we understand that it's, it is a tough financial climate out there at the moment and we want to make sure that both our, our residents and ratepayers, but also our, our businesses, were um, burdened by higher rates. In fact, it's actually the lowest rate increase um, in Fremantle for almost 20 years, and, and, and one which we thought was really important at this point in the economic cycle. Despite the low rate increase, though, it is a budget that's got some really great ambitious um, projects that are going to make Fremantle an even better and more livable city. Of course, at the heart of the project um, will be King Square, where we're spending um, many millions of dollars upgrading the heart of Fremantle, our civic and, and community heart, a project that will kick off um, in August and September this year. And the civic 
uh, and community building uh, where, where, where the City of Fremantle is, including the library and a new visitor centre and meeting rooms. That will kick off um, in early 2018, um, and so we budgeted for that. But it wasn't all about the Fremantle CBD. In fact, we really had a really strong focus this year on focusing on really improving services to our suburbs and actually taking that feedback that, that, that we've got from ratepayers. And, and one of those was around waste. People really value their yearly verge pickup, but in addition to that, they wanted more opportunities for recycling, um, the different things that, 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 that come through households. So we're gonna be offering a greatly improved drop-off service at the uh, Fremantle Depot, uh, where we'll see large numbers of things, all the ways from paint to batteries uh, to computers, um, to furniture and mattresses, all recycled um, as part of the, one of the most comprehensive recycling services uh, offered by any council in the South Metropolitan area. The other key change was actually being, uh, having uh, a renewed verge mowing service. It'll be one of the most comprehensive verge mowing services in, in, in the Perth Metropolitan area. We heard from our ratepayers that was something that people wanted uh, to be improved and we were certainly happy to do that as well as a range of improvements to car parks in, in, in North Fremantle, and um, a really strong focus on greening our suburbs, planting more trees, and actually adding more um, small play parks, and really creating, I mean, Fremantle's a great place already, but actually creating an even, even better community. So uh, more details will, will be coming to you shortly um, via your rates notice about the budget and all the services it has to offer, but it was really great to have that done. It was, a, it was, it was certainly a, a pretty tough climate to be doing a budget in, but I think we got to a really good point and a budget that I think will be really taking Fremantle forward. Thanks for watching. For more info, please visit the City of Fremantle's website.